do want to spend a few minutes talking about the portfolio, which is, um, I'm not sure when it's due. The but, 8th, March 8th. All right, March 8th. Um, the portfolio should be relatively easy for you to do. All right. Um, about the only thing that would be difficult with it is the fact that you are going to be having things in different folders. All right. Uh, at least that would be the way that I would suggest doing it. And that makes it just a little more difficult. But let's talk about what you would need to do for the portfolio. First of all, a portfolio is something that is often used for uh, people in, in certain career areas to sort of market their skills. Um, one big advantage that people in web development have is that they can actually show their work publicly showing what they've done actually in the field, all right? Um, if you, um, I'm, let me try to think of a job. If you were a, um, I'm going blank today. If you're a nuclear engineer, all right? You couldn't set up a nuclear power plant in your backyard and run it for a few years and tell people, well, look, Look how successful I am. I was able to create my own nuclear power plant and run it for a few years, all right? Can't do that. If you're a web developer, however, you can say, well, look, I'm a web developer, and I've created these web pages slash websites. So it's a way to showcase your skills to people that might be looking to employ you. Um, also, if you're looking, like, for consulting jobs, it's a way of, of advertising your skills. So uh, our portfolio is sort of to get you used to that sort of thinking. Um, in a portfolio, you'd probably pick among your best work, and, and in this class, I'm asking you to, to take and, and put all of your work out there. So what we will have, for example, in a portfolio will be something like this. You'll have a home page for your portfolio. That will maybe have a brief introduction. You can put pictures on it if you want, whatever. You will then have on your home page a link to each of your assignments. However many labs we have before the portfolio, I think there will be six of them before the portfolio. You know, thumb drives go for how much these days. You know, you can buy a whole bunch of memory for a very small amount. So there's no reason not to keep all of them. If you happen not to keep them, you can download them again from Canvas. All right? What I want you to do on each of your pages is make a link back to the portfolio. Back to portfolio. so that when you click it, it'll go back to this page. Now, that's really all you need to do. Make this page look good, put links on your pages, write a little bit about each lab assignment. If there's something that was hard for you that you struggled with, write about it. Uh, there's something that you learned, something you discovered, something you realized that you didn't realize before, you liked it, you hated it, you thought it was one of your best assignments, whatever. Just put some notes about it as well. Because that's an important part of a portfolio too, especially when you're doing it within a class, is allowing you to think back of what you what you did and what you learned. Do All you right? want um, you want those comments on the home page? Yes. Mike, okay. Yeah. On the home page. Okay. Uh, so like you would have a link to the portfolio and then maybe a brief description of what the assignment. Or, or a link to the page and then a, a description of the assignment. All you have to do on the on the lab assignments is put a link back to the portfolio. Now, you might run into a little difficulty if you just put everything in one folder. Because maybe you call each of these pages index.html, or maybe you have, you know, image1.jpg in a bunch of different pages, or whatever. All right? 
That's why I suggest doing this. You'll have a folder for your portfolio. That'll have your home page for the portfolio. Index.html, and that's the portfolio's home. Have in there any CSS that you'll have for the portfolio and any images for the portfolio. And then have a folder for each of your lab assignments. And then within those have the files that you turned in for each of them. So put everything in a portfolio folder and have each of your labs have its own folder. Now in order to do that, we have to be able to link to pages that are in different folders. That's something we haven't done as of yet now. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to download a couple exercises from Canvas that we have done before, uh, that we've gone over in class. And I'm going to sort of make like a little mini portfolio with a couple of items on it. So let me go and download a couple of assignments. Not assignments, um, examples. If you put the full physical path where it says C colon oh, files. Is it different because these are all in the same folder? These are all going to be in the same folder, and we're not going to put the full path. Okay. We're going to put what's called the relative path. Okay. All right? So, yeah, that's an excellent point. Um, but, yeah, that's the, difference between, that's the difference between what I'm talking about here and what I said before was, was bad. Good, good observation. So let me draw, let me grab another example from here. Wait a minute. I don't think I over. I don't think I there we go. So I have a news folder. I'll rename that the lab one. And I have an Olympics folder. I'll rename that to lab two. So I'm going to create my portfolio folder. And I'm going to put my lab one folder and my lab two folder in there. And so there you go. So I'm going to make a new web page. I'm still getting people that miss tags. That is that they like forget the end body tag or the end HTML tag. They've also I've also had people that have put tags in the wrong places. So I'm going to use this ex use this case to sort of review some of the rules. All right, at the top of the page you have a doc type. People have gotten that pretty well. You then have an HTML tag, which goes around everything on the page. So you have a start HTML tag. And then you have an end HTML tag. What I normally do is as soon as I put a start tag in, I'll immediately put the end tag in. That way I never have to remember and go back and do it. All right? So it's there. Nothing to remember to do. Within the HTML tag, there is a head section and end head. a body, and an end body.
Mike, real quick. Um, yeah. When you're making the HTML tags, do you should you indent those within the doc type? I mean, I've seen it done that way, but I don't know. Um, whichever you think is more readable. Okay. Um, I don't necessarily indent them because the HTML tag really isn't in the doc it's tag. It's not part of it. And yet. the doc because the doc tag really isn't a tag; it's a declaration. So if you want to, feel free to indent it. I definitely indent the head and body, though, because the head and body are contained within the HTML tag. All right. The only thing in the head tag will be the title right now, at this point in the class, will be the title and any CSS that we have. All right. So if we have any CSS, it will go here. It's probably better to use an external file for the CSS to point to another file because then you could always use that for another page. And you would point to the CSS file within the head, right? Yes. Okay. Any H1s, though, and H2s don't belong in the head. All right? That's a little confusing, I know, because the H1 and H2 you think of are though they're headings. The headings make sense in the head, but it doesn't work that way. H1s are in the body tag. And specifically, you can have a header tag inside the body tag that's sort of the banner of the page and you're going to have H1s and H2s and stuff in there. So I'm going to omit the paragraphs and the explanation and so on, but you know that you should put that in there. I also, uh, one thing I want to say is the footer is actually part of the body. A lot of people on the last couple of assignments that I was grading uh, had the footer after the body. And again, maybe that makes sense to you, uh, well, whatever, but it's not, it's not how the way it is. The, so the header and the footer are part of the body. I'm going to make a big nav here. Then I'm going to put all the links to all the other pages. So, it's an unordered list. And I'm going to make two links in here to lab one and lab two. And I'm going to leave the href for blank now. For uh, I'm going to leave the href blank for now. I'll come back in and fill it in later. And I might say something like, "This was our first lab." and the first page I ever made. All right. Then I'll have a link to the second page, second lab, and I'm leaving the href blank. And I'll put some comments about lab two. Okay. And again, maybe at the beginning in the header, I'll have a paragraph about me. The comments for uh, the labs, Mike, um, you can put those within paragraph elements? Yep. Okay. That's one, one thing I was trying to do. Yeah, you should I, be able I, to. I wasn't sure if it would work or not. Yeah, you should be able to. You know, try it. The worst yeah. that's going to happen is it's, you know, it won't work. work. Yeah. Okay, so this is our page. 
going to save it in my portfolio folder. It's on the desktop. If I can find it. And I'll call, I'm going to make sure I say that it's a, it's a web page, so HTML. And I'm going to call it index.html. And I'll go and save it. And now we have our page. Of course, our links don't work, right? Because I didn't put hrefs in there. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to put an href uh, to it. Now, if I notice, these pages are not in the same folder. So, lab one, for example, the URL is news.html. But if I put news.html here, it's not going to work. Or if I put muse.html, <laughs> unless my pages were about Pokemon or something. <laughs> All right, so now I have this link, but it doesn't work. Because if I don't specify a folder, it's going to expect it in the same folder as all the rest of the stuff. And it's not there. What folder is it in? Lab 1. It's in the folder called Lab 1. So therefore, all I do is before the file name, I put Lab 1 slash news.html. Now notice the direction of the slash. Some people that maybe have taken the operating systems course or have done other things on a computer notice that Windows typically uses a backslash. That doesn't matter. This isn't Windows. Web, uh, web HTML documents are sort of platform independent. So we don't use the conventions of Windows or Linux. We have our own set of conventions. And the convention says that you use a slash as a directory separator. All right? So now if I go and do this and look at the page and click on it, I get taken to that page. All right? So I can do the same thing with the second one. That is in a folder called Lab2, and the web page is called index.html. See, I couldn't put all these in the same folder because I have a bunch of index.htmls, right? And I can't have two files with the exact same name. So I can put that in lab 2, though, and I can do lab 2 slash index.html. All right. And I can save it. And now, whoops. I get taken to that page. All right. Now I want to create a link going back to the portfolio from each of the pages. So I'm in lab one or lab two, and I want to go up to the portfolio homepage, which is in the directory above it. Going down a directory, you put the name of the directory and a slash. If it's two or three directories deep, you put those two or three directory names, followed by a slash. All right? Going up is easier because a folder only has one sort of parent folder. Uh, a, a, par a folder can have a bunch of child folders underneath it, which means that to say the folder you want to go into, you have to give the specific name of the folder you want to go to. But going up the directory structure, these two folders are both contained in portfolio. So I just have to say I want to go to the parent directory. And that is done with a two dots and a slash. So I can put here, and I know this isn't a completed web page, uh, but I can put a, whoops, a href equals dot dot slash index.html. If I can type, I can do that. And just say back to portfolio. I would suggest make it easy on yourself and like make this like the top thing on the page right after the body tag. Make it easy.
easy for me too, so I don't have to spend a lot of time hunting around for the, the, the link to go back to the portfolio. And let me go and edit the other one. I have two web pages in this. I'm only going to worry about the main page. I'm only going to link to the home page of Lab 2, and I'm only going to put the link back on the home page. That will save you a little bit of work. So again, I'm going to put this right at the top of I copied the wrong, I guess I didn't paste back to, or I didn't copy to portfolio. No, that's not the href. Dot dot slash index dot html. So I'm going to save everything. Here's the portfolio. Now I can go to lab two. And I have at the top of the page back to portfolio, and that will take me back here. Go to lab one, back to portfolio. So that's really all you have to do. The only thing you have to do to your old assignments is make sure they're all in their own folder and put a link on the main page back to the portfolio. Again, you don't have to worry about every page. You don't have to, you know, if there's two or three pages in an assignment, you don't have to put it on all two or three. Just what your quote main page is. You'll create your portfolio homepage that will have a little description about the purpose of the portfolio, a little description about who you are, and we'll have a link to each lab and have a little description of the lab. Uh, make the page look good, so add CSS to it. I didn't do that just in the interest of time, but you know you can go and do that as well. That in a nutshell is portfolios. All right, and that in a nutshell is how do you get, how do you move around from directory to directory. Now, the same thing works for images too, by the way. If I had an image in a subfolder underneath the, the, the directory the page was in, I would put the folder name slash and then the name of the image. And if it was somehow above the folder I was in, I would say dot dot slash and then the name of the image. All right. You can use this for future assignments, too, to keep your directories less cluttered. So you can have all your HTML pages in one folder, all your CSS in another, all your images in, a, in another. Questions about this? You want us to put our old assignments in their own folders, the CSS files in their own folder, and then... No, I, I didn't say that. Okay. Um, I said for, for this... You, uh, you need to put, you need to have a folder that contains your portfolio homepage and a folder for each of the assignments. That's what you sort of need to do. I said you can, for future assignments, put your CSS in a folder separate from your HTML. Okay. That's not a requirement of the portfolio. It's not even really a requirement for any of the other assignments. Um, I don't think so, um, uh, unless I make it a requirement. But I'm saying you can do that if you want to keep it more organized. If you think about it, on a large website, you know, you're going to have dozens of HTML pages, dozens of images, hundreds of images maybe, and then a few CSS files. So just like you would organize your folder on your machine at home to keep things separate in their own folders, you can do that with uh, the files on your web page. All right, questions about this? All right, let's talk about prototypes. What is a prototype? It's a, uh, pardon me? A very early stage of something. That's good. Anyone want to add to that? When it comes to HTML, it's a sample of uh, your website, so like a few pages out of. Okay. It's an early stage of something. It is, uh, in the case of a website, it, it might be just a sampling of the pages. It might not be every single page. You might have a bunch of pages that all sort of look the same, and you don't have to have a prototype for each of them. You could have a prototype of, of a couple of them and say, well, all the pages are going to look like this. All right? If I had a prototype of the next iPhone, all right, ooh, besides putting it on eBay,
eBay to sell it, what would I expect that prototype to be able to do? Function like an iPhone? Function exactly like an iPhone? No, like, uh, they have the main functions at least? Yeah, do some of the things that an iPhone does, and, and probably some of the more important things that an iPhone does, right? And that's sort of the last stage of the design. Remember we talked about the design consists of um, five steps, five sections. Um, the first four sections are, are, are just written. They're done in a Word document. There's diagrams and there's written text, but there's no actual HTML in the first four steps. The fifth step is uh, actual HTML, CSS, image files. It's actually web pages, but they don't need to be completed. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be completed. What kind of things would you expect? If you were a user and you hired someone to develop a website, about you or about your business. What are some things that you'd expect the prototype to be able to do? And what are some of the things that maybe you would not necessarily expect the prototype to do? Because after all, prototype doesn't do everything. You'd want it to easily identify your company. Okay. To make it stand out. All right, the prototype, you'd, you'd want the prototype at the very least for you to be sure what the purpose of the site is and not just be very generic looking. So you'd expect the prototype to sort of look like the final site in terms of, and again, I hate this word, but I'll use it anyhow, branding, right? So in other words, if you were do, if you were a heavy metal band and someone gave you a prototype of a web page that was in pink, you probably wouldn't like it. Whereas, um, you know, uh, if they gave it to you in, you know, with, with black and white, it would be like, yeah, that's, I kind of expect it to look like that. So it should kind of look like the way the final site is going to look, just on an aesthetic level, all right? Because, again, you want it branded. You want it to match your uh, organization, uh, the tone of your organization. If you were a serious news site, you'd want it to look serious. You wouldn't want it to look fun with, you know, pinwheels spinning in the background and, you know, things like that. Um, what's something else that you might expect to be in the prototype? Yes? Organization. Organization. All right. And in other words, you'd want to be able to see how the content on the website is going to be divided, what the different sections of the site are going to be, and what the different sections of the page is going to be. All right. So one of the things that we talked about in the design is we talked about a wireframe. All right. So a wireframe is something like this. It's just a sketch where we say that we have a banner that looks like this. And that maybe identifies the company. We have a navigation section here. That's going to have the main links going across the top of the page in this case. We're going to have maybe a section here that's going to be the main content area. And finally, we're going to have a footer here that has contact info, you know, someone's email address, someone's phone number, that sort of thing. So that might be the wireframe. So when you say organization, I think it actually means a couple different things. First of all, how each page is organized. This page is organized this way. And it's okay to only have one wireframe, right? We're not doing a gigantic site for your, for your project. So you don't need 10 different wireframes. Chances are you need one or maybe two wireframes. Sometimes people want the home page to look a little bit different for the rest of the page on the site. All right. Or there might be a section of the site that has a slightly different navigation, or not navigation, layout. 
So, but you might be able to get by with just one wireframe. All my pages look like this. All my pages are basically structured and organized like this. So that's one way that we mean organization. How the page is organized. It's very reassuring for a user to see consistency in the way that it's organized. All right? That may go without saying, but I've seen enough bad websites that is worth saying. All right? In other words, you're sort of educating people how your site is going to work. So they get used to seeing the navigation in a certain spot, right? And therefore, keep it consistent. Don't change it around. Even if you do have a slightly different page, maybe you have a photo gallery where the page is organized this way. Where you have, instead of one big section, you have four smaller sections with images in them, and then you have the footer. So even if you do have a page that is a little bit different, you still keep the consistency for the rest of the page. You don't change it around and all of a sudden have the navigation on the left on one page, on the right on another, on the bottom, in the middle, whatever. You keep it consistent. So users get an idea of how your website works and that makes it easier for them. Another observation, um, I think this is an observation by Jacob Nielsen, a, a great uh, designer who has something called uh, Nielsen's Law. And he says that people visit, people spend more time on other people's sites than they do on your site, right? When you look at your site, even if, you, even if, it's, even if something that's like really important to you, like Canvas, all right. Yeah, you spend a lot of time on it, I hope, or at least some time on it. But if you looked at all the other sites that you visit, you spend more time on those. What's the implication of that? The implication of that is there's certain conventions in web design all over the web, and you want to kind of stick to them. All right. For example, where is the search usually on a website? Upper corner. Upper corner, usually. Top. And usually on the right side. So guess what? If you have a search capability on your site, that's where you put it. All right? Uh, navigation, there's a little bit of variance for that. Sometimes navigation's along the top, sometimes it's along one side, sometimes it's time the other. But again, there's a couple of places where it typically is. All right? So follow those conventions. The the, the, there's usually a banner on the very top of the page that says, like, what the site is. You know, who made the site. What's uh, the purpose of the site. Then there's a footer on the bottom that gives, like, copyright information, who you contact. Maybe some other links that are sort of important, but not necessarily used on a daily basis. That sort of thing. So you sort of follow those conventions. Now... Some people might say, well, gee, if we just do everything that everyone else does, how are we going to stand out? You know, how are we going to show our creativity? To which I have a couple of answers. First of all, you don't make websites to show off your creativity. All right? You make websites to communicate information effectively. All right? And to help the users realize their goals and your organization realize their goals. So... Yeah, it's not there as an art project for you. You know, if you want to showcase your creativity, you know, take up painting, take up photography, whatever. The second part of me says, well, there's plenty of chances for you to show your creativity. All right? But pick your spots. All right? Um, again, you want to follow convention to a certain point. That doesn't mean that there aren't places for you to go and do things in a creative way or in a different way. It's just like a book. I've seen some very creatively designed books, but you know, they all like have a cover on the front of them, right? If you, at least if you're talking about you know English books. They have a cover in the front. They probably have a table of contents a couple pages in. They might have an index in the back. They might have the author's biography in the back. They follow certain conventions. It doesn't mean that the book isn't creative. You can do all kinds of creative things in that stuff in between. 
but the basic structure, you want to sort of follow the conventions. All right? So that's one way that you want to, sh that's one thing you want to show on your prototype, is you want to bring these wireframes to life. All right? Instead of just a sketch, an actual semi-working web page for at least some of the sites. So you want to show the organizations of the individual pages, but you also want to show the organization of the content on the site. And what I mean by that is, you want to show the navigation. How does the navigation work? It's one of the critical things of a website, is how the navigation works. Are the categories well chosen? Do they make sense? Will they make sense to your users? Sometimes you might have a main navigation and a sub-navigation. I'll show an example of that when I put the projector back on. Where there's a main navigation that's on every page, and then each section has its own little sub-navigation. Is it organized in a way that makes sense? Is it organized in a way that it's clear to people visiting that this is how it works? So, the overall look of the site, I would say, is important to show in the prototype. So you want the CSS done, or mostly done, and you want the navigation and the organization of the site, the organization of the page, and the organization of the content on the site via the navigation to be done to some degree. What are some of the things that we're not necessarily interested in getting perfect uh, in a prototype? The content. The content. All right. In a larger site, you may not actually be the person writing the content. You know, an About Us page. All right? There might be an About Us page where they tell the company's history. All right? You might be the, you might be the web developer, but you might not be responsible for writing that. Maybe the company president's going to write that, or someone in marketing, or whatever. But, in your prototype, you have to put something there. All right? So there's kind of two schools of thought. One school of thought says you can just put Greek text there. All right? As long as your user is educated enough to know, hey, this is a placeholder. Uh, this isn't what it's really going to say. Um, it's going to have the content from your marketing department or your president or whatever. The other, other thought is that you do want to make the content, some people think you want to make the content look as close to complete as possible. So while my, you may not have a perfect uh, set of content for it, you might want to take a shot of doing more than just Greek text. Or if you have images, you might want the images, um, might not be the final images, but you want, might want the images to sort of look like they're going to look. So you might use a, a, uh, a, a Creative Commons picture to show uh, students in a classroom, even though you're actually going to get pictures of actual students from your actual classrooms. But to fill the space, you might use a Creative Commons image or something like that. I will say some users get very thrown by test or prototype text and images. Um, and, and that's why it, sometimes it's good to make it look as realistic as possible. I remember one time. It's sort of a totally different thing, but I think it relates. Uh, I was doing a, re I worked for a car rental company, and I was doing a report, something about our fleet management, you know, managing the cars that we had. And I put down a cost for a car literally by, like, scrunching my hand on the number pad. I didn't even, like, look at what I was typing. So it gave a real goofy number. And when I showed that to the people in the fleet department, they were obsessed with that. Why? That car wouldn't cost $74,000. It's like, yeah, I know it won't cost $74,000. That just happens to be the keys my hand pressed when I entered in the test data, right? So sometimes you can throw people if you have not realistic looking data, all right, whether it be on a website or that. So it's good sometimes to make at least a little effort to show them what it's going to look like, even if it's not finished and polished. The other thing about a prototype that you don't necessarily need is you don't necessarily need anything to be perfect. So you may still be playing with the CSS, 
all right? You may still be playing with uh, the positioning of things, but you want it to look close to how it's going to look. The other thing is you might not be complete. In other words, if you have 10 pages on your final website, maybe you only have three of them done. And that's fine, all right? When we talk about client when we talk about in other classes where there's scripting involved, or maybe we're pulling data from a database, there's other functionality that, that might not work. You know, the search might not work. It might always show you just the same list of books in the library, no matter what you put, put in the search. But at least it shows you how the search kind of will work. All right? So that's a prototype. Now, let's think about the process we're going to figure out. All right? We'll keep this in mind. Let's say, all right, we have our wireframes. We're going to take that to develop a template. We're going to clone that template a couple of times to have some prototype pages. And then we're going to make adjustments and clone it some more to have our final pages. Now, in this case, maybe there will be three HTML pages. In this case, there might be ten HTML pages. This template is going to be one HTML page. How many CSS files are we going to have throughout this process? One. Likely one. If not one, then a small set of pages. We're going to have more HTML than CSS. All right? We might end up with two CSS pay, uh, uh, files. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about mobile development later on where you might have a, a, a CSS file for the, the desktop version of the site and a CSS file for the mobile version of the site. But you're not going to have 10 CSS files, a CSS file for every page. You're probably, and for the prototype that we're going to develop and talk about in class, we're going to have one CSS file. All right. When we develop the prototype and we develop these three prototype pages, is all this code different on every page? In other words, is the banner, the navigation, the section, and the footer, are they all different on every page? No. No. What part is going to be different on every page? The body. The body. This, this part right here, the section. All right? So there's going to be some HTML that's common on every page, and there's going to be some HTML that is different on every page. All right? So our template, when we develop it, we want to make sure as to as great a degree we have is that we have our common HTML code perfect. Perfect is enclosed in quotes, of course, because not, nothing is ever perfect, right? But we're going to make sure that we did a really good job on that. Why do I say that? Because after we make our template, we're going to start cloning that template to make our prototype pages. So, I'm going to develop the HTML for a template, and it's going to have this stuff on it. It's going to have a banner, it's going to have a navigation, and it's going to have a footer. And it might not have anything for the section, or it might just have some placeholder code for the section. I'm then going to take it and I'm going to clone it to three different pages to make my prototype. What if I forgot something in the banner? All right? If I forgot something in the banner, I'm going to have to go into three places and change it, right? If I wanted to put um, 
the city that our, our, our business is, is in. You know, if I want that up in the banner, and I forgot to put that in the banner. After I've cloned it and started working on the prototype, if I realize something is missing from this common HTML, guess what? I have to go and repeat that change three times. All right? Gets even worse down here, right, when I have 10 pages. If I realize I missed something there, I'm going to have to go and change 10 different web pages. All right? So therefore, the common HTML code, so like this, this, and this, I want to make sure in my template, before I start cloning that template, making copies of it, I want to make sure that that code is, is as good as I could possibly make it. And I'm going to like double and triple check it to make sure that I didn't miss something that I need there. The CSS, guess what? I don't care quite as much about getting the CSS perfect. Why not? Well, because I only have to change it in one place if it's wrong. If I make the CSS blue, and I realize now I should be sort of a lighter blue, guess what? I only have to make that change in one CSS file. It's not that big of a deal. Whereas, gee, I forgot a link in my navigation, I have to go make that change in all of the HTML files. All right? I also have another neat thing. So I can actually make a couple of different prototypes very easily. How? Simply by taking the prototype I develop and putting in a different CSS file with the exact same HTML files. All right? So that's really cool. Because I can then show the person I'm developing the site for, this is option A, this is option B. Which do you like? And they might say A, they might say B, all right? They might say, I like the colors on A, but the fonts on B. Okay, it's no big deal, all right? They might not like either of them, all right? But if they don't like them, they'll tell you what they don't like about them. And you can hopefully then go and take that information and make something that, that they do like. All right? You sort of have to develop a little bit of a thick skin when you're a web developer and you're creating prototypes. Because you put them out there to be evaluated and critiqued. All right? So this isn't meant to be your final work. All right? A lot of people have a hard time verbalizing exactly what they want a web page to look like. But if you show them a web page, they can tell you if they like it or don't like it. It's just human nature. All right? And especially if you show them multiple alternatives, you can show them two different approaches. You can show them the simpler style of web page or maybe the more ornate web page. And you, they can make the call, which they like better. All right? So, what we will do next time is we will work on this part of it. We'll take a wireframe. We'll make a template. One HTML, one CSS. We'll try our best to get the common code perfect. And then we'll clone it and make a prototype for some project. We'll make up a project. Think of what project you want to do as a, as a test project. All right? Um, we can have fun with that. All right. We'll even probably make multiple, in fact, we definitely will make multiple versions of this prototype so that we can show it to people and they could evaluate it. In this section of the course, we're going to learn a lot about CSS that we haven't talked about. How to change fonts, what fonts are good to use, um, how to change the layout. Maybe we want the navigation on the side instead. Guess what? We can do that without touching our HTML and do that only with CSS, which gives us a lot of flexibility if we know the right CSS to do that. Okay, um, I think that's all I had. Um, there was something sticking in my head that I wanted to mention, but I can't think of it right now. If I do think about it and it was important, I'll post an announcement. So that's all I had today. We'll see you over in the lab.